This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup Show from Abbera's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are this leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Abbera. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We're starting today's show with a quick roundup of various automaker quarterly reports as published this week. And as a reminder, all figures are quoted in US dollars unless stated. Tesla published its quarterly earnings on Tuesday, confirming total Q1 production of 433,371 vehicles and deliveries of 386,810 vehicles. Total revenue declined from 23.33 billion in Q1 last year to 21.3 billion this, with net income dropping 55% to 1.13 billion. Volvo Cars published its quarterly earnings on Wednesday this week, posting an increase in retail sales year-on-year year with 182,687 cars sold. Despite the increase in sales, mostly driven by an increase in EV sales across the brand, the brand said its drop in revenue came from foreign exchange effects and lower revenue from contract manufacturing. Net earnings fell year-on-year. Ford published its quarterly earnings on Wednesday, showing growing sales overall and EV sales growing 86% in the first quarter. Due to some pretty large price cuts and competition, however, Ford's EV division, Model E, recorded a net loss of $1.3 billion. Overall, Ford's total revenue grew 3% to $42.8 billion, with Ford's Pro Division enjoying the largest growth, with revenue up 36%. General Motors posted its earnings on Tuesday, with record-breaking quarterly figures for the company as a whole, beating Wall Street estimates and achieving quarterly revenues of $43 billion. While GM's Altium-based vehicle deliveries rose 36% year-on-year, its overall EV sales for the quarter were down a full 20%, resulting in a noticeable drop in US EV market share during the quarter. GM says that will change this year. After what feels like months and months of teasing, Mercedes-Benz finally unveiled its G-Wagon EV this week, complete with all-wheel drive and tank turn capabilities. Officially called the Mercedes-Benz G580 with EQ technology, the all-electric G-Class has a quartet of motors integrated into its ladder chassis that are capable of a total power output of 432 kilowatts, alongside virtual differential locks and torque vectoring. It's this quad motor design that makes the SUV's tank turn a reality, while a 116 kilowatt hour battery pack offers a W LTP range of 473 kilometers or 293 miles. That is not great, but let's be honest, the G-Class has never been a comfortable long-distance road tripper. Pricing to follow. It's official. Workers at Volkswagen's Chattanooga, Tennessee production facility, where Volkswagen makes North American market ID4 EVs, have voted in favour of unionisation. In a secret ballot vote overseen by the National Labor Relations Board, 73% of eligible employees voted to become part of United Auto Workers, that's UAW. This means... Once the vote has been certified, workers at the plant will be represented and protected by UAW, gain collective bargaining rights and more say in how the plant operates. The governor of Tennessee, reacting to the news of the vote, said he believed workers were making a massive mistake by voting to unionise. Governor Lee notes that his family business, which is in the construction industry, does not have union representation for its employees, calling the news a loss for workers in the state. There's barely a week that goes by where we don't hear about some new amazing battery breakthrough. And this week is no exception, thanks to a new product reveal from CATL. As part of its official news conference at Auto China 2024 in Beijing, CATL unveiled a new enhanced version of its Shenqing battery called the Shenqing Plus. 
an LFP battery, it promises a range in excess of 1,000 kilometres, 621 miles, on the CLTC test cycle, a gravimetric energy density of 205 watt-hours per kilogram, on par with lithium-ion packs, and a charge rate of 4C. This means, says CATL, that it's possible to add up to 370 miles of CLTC range in just 10 minutes in ideal conditions. Granted, that figure is using an overly optimistic range rating, but it's still impressive. Following Ford's Q1 earnings report this week, Ford's CEO Jim Farley confirmed during the quarterly earnings call for the company that Ford is shifting its EV priorities in the coming years. First, he confirmed that Ford is pushing back plans for its Blue Oval City production facility, with a goal now of starting EV production there in 2026 rather than the originally planned 2025. Ford is also delaying plans to launch a three-row electric SUV, instead planning on introducing more hybrids to its lineup. But it's not all bad news for EVs because Farley suggested that switch is partly to help Ford fill the gap as it doubles down on developing new next-generation EVs that are smaller and more affordable, hinting that the end goal is a sub-$30,000 EV in the near future. However, as is always the case, watch what Ford does, not what it says. BMW has officially unveiled its 2025 Mini Aceman EV at Auto China 2024. A four-door Mini crossover designed to go on sale alongside the two-door Mini Cooper SE, the Aceman features a choice of 42.5 kWh or 54.2 kWh battery packs. This gives a claimed WLTP range for the larger pack of 252 miles or 405 kilometers per charge. As with its sibling, Mini appears to be targeting existing Mini fans rather than EV conquests, and given those specs, not to mention a paltry max recharge rate of 95 kilowatts for the larger pack and 75 kilowatts for the smaller pack, it is unlikely to give any rivals nightmares. BMW has yet to publish official prices, but we can expect those to follow shortly. As is usually the case, Tesla shared a lot of extra information about its future plans in its shareholder letter, and Tesla CEO Elon Musk also made comments during the earnings call that give some hints as to what's coming down the pipe. First, Tesla clarified its plans for its so-called affordable EV, confirming it plans to start producing future models in the second half of next year on its current production lines instead of the previously discussed unboxed production strategy. That said, Tesla did confirm that its promised robo-taxi, revealed due August 8th, will use the unboxed manufacturing strategy. Tesla also confirmed that it now is making 1,000 Cybertrucks per week at its Austin facility, and thanks to expansion of its 4680 battery production capacity, expects its in-house cells to be cheaper than its suppliers' cells by the end of this year. Also, during the earnings call, we learned from Tesla's VP of Vehicle Engineering that the company is now expecting volume production of Tesla Semi to begin in late 2025, with external customer deliveries outside of its pilot fleets due to start in 2026. Finally, for this mini Tesla roundup, Elon Musk commented in the earnings call that he believes Tesla will begin deliveries of the Optimus robot next year, with plans internally to start using the robots in Tesla. Tesla production facilities later this year. As other commentators noted, Musk appeared bored with the automotive side of Tesla and seemed more engaged on its robotics plans for the future. Finally, for this segment, it's an oft-voiced concern among would-be EV owners that the battery pack of their prospective car won't last very long, requiring a costly replacement. But a new study from Recurrent, entitled New Study, How Long Do Electric Car Batteries Last?, provides some much-needed data to highlight that battery failures leading to EV battery replacement have dramatically fallen in the last decade, with less than half a percent of EVs made between 2016 and today requiring any form of battery replacement. This is in stark contrast to vehicles made in 2011, of which an estimated 7.5% of that model year population required a battery replacement. 
which EVs required replacements the most that weren't part of an official defect-driven recall campaign? Well, those were early Nissan Leafs and Tesla Model S's, followed by Jaguar I-Paces and Chevrolet Volts with AV. Before we get to those final two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aldara, you should very much check out our own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV and so much more. So follow that link below and start your journey today. If you're a regular viewer, you might know that I'm personally a fan of vehicle-to-home backup power solutions, and I have one attached to my home. But this week, a news story crossed our desks that we just had to look into. A story about a Tesla Cybertruck owner that had been quoted over 30,000 US dollars to add Tesla's PowerShare V to G capability to his home. That headline certainly gets most people clicking, but dig a little deeper and you'll see that the lion's share of the quote from a Tesla certified partner is to upgrade the customer's home power service to 320 amps. I don't know the individual circumstances of the customer, but it's worth reiterating that install costs for hardware like this does vary according to your home and situation. But that breaker upgrade? Something there seems off. And finally, I might own a Ford F-150 Lightning as my not-a-daily driver that gets used when we need to haul something or tow something, which actually happens quite a lot around here. But as a British farm girl, I am so tempted to swap that F-150 Lightning out for a classic electric Land Rover. That's if I could find one. And back in 2013, I was lucky enough to drive a fully electric Land Rover built prototype Defender during Land Rover's official 65th birthday celebrations. It was a total hoot and I really wanted it to become a production vehicle. It just never did. But now a British firm called BEDEO unveiled a new retrofit conversion for the Land Rover Defender featuring in-wheel motors from its parent company Protean. Fitted with 75 kilowatt hour battery and an all-wheel drive, it looks amazing and I'd love to build one. But alas, I don't have the funds to make it a reality. Although if the company behind it wants to help, give me a call. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it's time to switch to Aldara's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch and you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I will be back next week as usual, but in the meantime, be sure to check out other great content from this channel, especially that produced by the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of the week. Kakite! See you next time.